right, so to make our piece today, we're gonna to be using some eight aught seed beads. Now I like to use two different colors. You could do three colors, you could do any kind of combination that you want, but for my purposes today, I'm just gonna pick two random colors. Well, they're not really random. I tried to make it look nice. <laughs> I'm also gonna be using a button. We're gonna uh, use a button with a shank on the end and you can use any size button because I get that question a lot, like well, what size button can I use? And you can use any size. We're also gonna be using a barrel knot tube at the very end. So I'm just gonna take that and put that off to the side right now. I have about 60 inches of two millimeter leather, but honestly, I think we're gonna be able to get away with using a little bit less than that. And so once I'm finished the entire project, I will measure and see how much uh, waste there is so that you don't have to use too much. I also have about two and a half meters of three ply Irish wax linen. And we're gonna need about, it depends on the size of your wrist, but somewhere between 12 to 16 inches of our ball chain. And for tools, we're just gonna need a pair of cutters and we're gonna probably need a ruler at the end and then the barrel knot tube. Now also I am gonna be using um, a little board here that has a bull nose clip so that I can uh, properly demonstrate how to macrame. Some people like to tape it down onto things or tie it on or if you have a macrame board, whatever way that you like to macrame, uh, I just find for demonstration purposes, this kind of works the best. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so this is a little bit difficult to show under a camera because we only have limited space, but I'm gonna do my very best to try and keep myself in frame here. So now I will tell you that I have actually um, got one that I'm going to um, swap out. This took me about three hours, only because I wasn't really you know, working fast at it, but it is a, a project that can take a little bit on the longer side. So I knew I couldn't do that on camera. Uh, so I'm going to show you how I start and uh, then I will swap out the almost finished one and show you how I finish. So what I'm gonna do is take my leather and um, marry up the two ends and then I'm going to slide my knot down to the middle of my leather. And of course, it doesn't have to be exact, but we do uh, wanna have it fairly close. And now we're gonna try and get this between um, the bull nose clip. So, you know, you can um, actually take these out to make it a little bit easier, but you should be able to just kind of pop it up in there. And all this is gonna do is just make it so that you've got something that will give you a little bit of resistance. And mainly it's for me, for demo purposes. So, now you could tape this down at the end here, like if you um, like a little bit of resistance, you could use some painter's tape and tape that down. I tend to macrame in my hands just because it gives me a little bit more, um, I like to feel things when I'm doing them. Um, but you know, you can, again, everybody has a different way of macrame, so this is just the way that I do it. Then I'm gonna take my Irish wax linen and I'm going to find the center of it. And of course, it's too hard to do that on camera. So I'm just gonna find the center of it. And I'm going to place it behind my leather. And this is how we're going to attach our button to our leather. Normally I would do a barrel knot, but what I find is sometimes the barrel knot can make your leather sort of sit a little bit off kilter. And I absolutely do not want that on this project. It's imperative that your leather stay completely flat um, when you're when you're doing this with the chain. So um, it'll make more sense as I go along. So I'm gonna go about a quarter of an inch from the shank of the button and I'm gonna start my first um, part of my uh, square knot. So a square knot is just what I call P's and Q's. So I'm gonna make it sort of a P over top of my leather and then I'm gonna take that tail and bring it back up through the hole. So I'm going underneath the leather and I'm just hoping I'm on camera. My, um, sorry, I'm moving things around to make sure I'm on camera there. There we go. Um, <laughs> Cause it's so easy to get off camera when you're doing so many things at one time. Okay, so I wanna bring that up to where I want it, which is, I'm just gonna make sure, yeah, I'm just gonna scoosh that down. So I wanna have that up there and I don't want it too tight, but I want it, you know, it's sort of that not too tight, but too, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> All right, so now I wanna do my Q on the other side. So we go backwards, which is kind of like a backwards P, go over top and then underneath and up through that hole. So the main thing with this uh, particular project is maintaining tension throughout the whole thing. Um, that's really important. So we're gonna do two of these. So there's one full square knot. 
So you see what I mean by doing it in my hand. I just kind of like, I don't um, stop and start it a lot. I just kind of maneuver things in my hands. And sorry, this is going to make a bunch of racket uh, because it, you know, bangs against there. But for demo purposes, it really is the best way for me to show you uh, what I'm doing. So you can see, I just kind of grab that underneath one with my fingers and then pull it up. Okay. Now on this one, I'm going to make my P. And then I'm going to not tighten it up so much. I'm just going to kind of put it like that. Now this is one of those things where you kind of have to hold your tongue the right way. It, the heart, This is the hardest part of the whole project is getting this started. And, you know, honestly, if you want to sacrifice a, 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 a link or two of this, it might be easier. But I'm going to put one of the pieces of chain on one side and one on the other. So um, if, you're, if you've got a big piece that's like 14 inches or whatever, just cut it in half so that you've got two separate pieces. So I want to get that up there. So it's not really hard. It's just, you know, a little futzy, especially if you don't have this tied down. When I was making my sample, I didn't have it tied down in any way, and it was a bit of a bear. So now I want to make sure that those um, the two pieces of chain are sitting exactly on top of the uh, leather. So they should be sort of squared up on top. So I just kind of, you know, maneuver it around with my thumbnails and stuff and make sure that it's where I want it. And it, it may not go exactly where you want it to start, but we'll just keep bossing it around. So I'm pulling that fairly tight. And now I'm going to do the Q right in that same slot. So I get it started. And then I will maneuver it back into um, where I wanted it here. All right. So there we go. That's how we get that started. Okay, so that's exactly what we want. We want everything kind of laying on top there. So now you're going to try and figure out what you're going to use for your um, your colors and you know your pattern. And on my sample, I did a three of one color and three of another. So you know probably the silver that I've chosen for this one isn't the best, but I was just kind of grabbing whatever I had uh, available to me. Um, so. If you, you kind of have to make like a little bit of a, a needle on the end to make it easy enough to go through there. And I think by accident, <laughs> when I was grabbing this, I grabbed four ply, um, which is not what we want. We want three ply, but it looks like the four ply is going to work. It just is going to be a little bit bulkier. Um, but yeah, I think I grabbed it from the bottom of our um, area where we keep all of our iris wax linen. And, and now that I'm thinking, yeah, that, this is four ply. But you know, it's good to know that it would work. It's just a little bit bulkier than I would like. So I'm going to put um, one seed bead on either side. Sorry, it's lots of noise and banging around and movement of things trying to show you. So now all I'm going to be doing is my P's and Q's uh, in between each um, piece of the chain. So always going under. So what I do is I get that sort of started and then I sort of get it into place. Now we want to make sure that our uh, beads are always above. We don't want this to happen. We don't want it underneath. We want to make sure they're above our pieces there. So before I, uh, you can see how the chain has kind of moved over. I pull it back and one uh, another little trick that I find kind of helps the chain fall into place a little bit better is by putting it in the middle. It sometimes helps a bit to guide it back to where you want it because you definitely do not want this chain pushing over. And so you can see why this takes a little bit of time because it can be a little bit futzy to start. Once you get it started, it's not quite so, uh, you know, time consuming. So that's what we're gonna do there. And then we're gonna do our cue back in the same spot. So each um, square knot is going to be in one spot, like in that it's going to be in between each ball of the ball chain. So pull that tight. So it's good to know that this is working with the four. It is a little bit heavier looking, but it's okay. It works. So sorry for the, the noise there, but I don't know if I'd be able to show you without. So this is what we want to have happen. So I'm going to do that uh, three times with the same color, and then I'm going to do it three times with my alternate color. So, oh. 
Let me get that up there. I'm gonna um, show you a couple more because uh, I need to show you how we don't want it to look on the back. So I need to have a little bit uh, done here to be able to show you. But you know, the, um, the combinations are limitless. We carry this ball chain in, oh, I think a half a dozen different colors. Uh, you don't necessarily have to match your button to your chain. You could do, um, you know, like a complementary color. You could mix your metals and use do different colors. So you can do so many things. We have so many different colors le of leather. Now I would recommend using the natural leathers versus the um, the shiny metallic leathers because those have got a lot of slip to them, and it might be. Uh, it might not be a great thing with the ball chain. It might just move around too much. So I would just be careful of the kind of leather that you use. Now we only sell really good quality leather, so I'm able to speak to that, but for other leathers, I don't know. So now what I wanna do when I'm, when I'm making this is not only do I wanna make sure that those ball chains are lining up on top of the leather, but what I do is I just kind of maneuver my uh, seed beads back into place there so that they're all starting to line up. So you can see now how this is starting to take shape and how you would not want to sit through this entire demo of me doing this whole thing, listening to all that rattling and jingling. So I'm just gonna get um, a couple of these on and then I'll switch colors to show you uh, what that looks like. So again, we're going to do our P and I find that if I don't leave myself too much um, you know, excess materials, it's a little bit easier to do this. So just take those ball chains and kind of scoosh them over before you tighten up your uh, Irish wax linen. And if it has moved over a bit, you it is actually fairly flexible in that you can push it back because I could see that those were starting to move over. So you're the boss when you're making your own jewelry. So that's the nice thing is that you can just boss those back to where you want it. So now the one thing with Irish Wax Linen is that it is very sticky. Uh, my lovely friend Heather Powers, she uses a lot of Irish Wax Linen in her projects. And what she does is she will take a uh, paper sack of some kind, paper bag, and she will run it over top of this to remove just a little bit of the Irish Wax Linen because we want the sticky, but we don't necessarily want all the sticky that comes with this. Uh, so. You know, if you want to do that, it will take away just a little bit of the sticky, but I, you know, I'm, I'm used to having it all over my hands when I'm doing this, so it's not such a big deal. So now I've changed to kind of like a metallic uh, silver, which, you know, is probably not the best color to do with this, but that's what I grabbed. That's what I had available to me. So again, we're just going to do three of this. So I'll just show you this one here, and then I'm gonna take it out and show you what it needs to look like on the back. So I'll get this one done. And um, I made mine the other night watching a movie, so this is definitely, once you get going, it's uh, pretty easy to do, um, and it's got such a cute effect. I just loved how it turned out. This actually started out as something completely different. I was going to make a different kind of a bracelet. And then, you know, I start playing and then something else is born. So there we go. So I would just, for my pattern, I did three and then three, and then I just alternated the colors. So you can see how that stacks up really nice. The beads look really cute on the side. So now I just wanna show you a little bit of a troubleshooting kind of thing. Just gonna noisily take that off to the side there. So I wanna take my button out. Now, if you can't get them in and out, you can actually, with these bullnose clips, you can actually pull that um, out, usually. It could be because the button's in there that it's not coming out, but normally they come out. So mine's just kind of lodged in there now. There we go. Okay, so if you look at the back, you can see that you can barely see the chain on that one side, and that's what we want. We don't want to see something like, like this. You don't want to have your chain that's sort of rotating over to one side because then it's going to be off kilter. So you always want to make sure that you're pushing that chain back up on the top. So I'm just going to swap out with my uh, other one here. All right, so you can see the other one that I made here. I used a different button 
and I've used some of the, uh, I think this is the Walnut Irish uh, Wax Linen, and I used the same color ball chain. And then I used two different colors here. Everybody always asks me what colors I used. Uh, this one, uh, this the gray one is the 8-92002. This is the matte metallic gray. And then this is the 8-92028. Uh, it's a fancy frosted seafoam green. I don't even know if they manufacture this one, unfortunately. But, you know, any sort of muted, um, pale, greeny kind of color would work, work if you wanted to, uh, you know, completely copy what I did here. And I just used the uh, natural gray leather for this. So you can see on the back that you can't really see my chain. The odd spot, you can see just a little bit, but you just wanna make sure that it lines up on top. And look how cute that is. I absolutely love this. And when it's done up, I think it's gonna be so sweet. Now you could um, maybe put it a, a charm up here. You know, you could maybe do a couple, uh, square knots and then put a bale, like a rounded bale and hang a charm off there. You know, this is not gonna be a kit. This is just going to be, um, I'm just gonna put a complete list down below of all the products that I used. And so you can make your own. We're limiting our kits a little bit right now while we're going through this transition with Tierra Cast closing. And I'm trying to find suppliers that can give me really good quality things. So we just don't have enough for kits at the moment. So. I will just be listing everything that you can use, but we carry everything that you uh, would need for this. So the nice thing about that is that you can make it your own. Okay, so what I did on this one is I made it sort of to fit me. So I've used about, on this now I've got, I've used about seven and a quarter, no, actually I'll go from there. I've used just under seven inches of ball chain and I have a fairly large wrist. So you'll have to kind of figure out uh, if you're making this for yourself, uh, what size you would want. And we'll measure the end to see how much my end puts on there. Uh, but um, all you would do is just take it off of your board and, and sort of wrap it around your wrist and then add the measurement that I'm going to give you at the end to figure out what length you would need. All right, so you can see what I've done here is if I, I've ended, I sort of figured out, you know, I, I took mine off and then I, I figured out that this is going to probably fit. So I've got a little bit of extra. I'm just going to put a mat there and see if it kind of deadens the the sound a little bit move some of my beads because we don't need anything except our barrel knot tube and a pair of cutters so I have this extra here so you can cut um, wherever you want you can cut these last ones off let's see and you can leave it like that if you want just have an extra one or you could cut that out um, so it's up to you. Uh, this isn't going to be secured down, but it's not, it's not going to go anywhere. So now what I would do is I would end with a couple more square knots. So you can see I'm running out of uh, my Irish wax linen, but I think I've got enough here to do a few square knots. So I'll just do my, my P and I'm just going to do this in my hand. There's no point in getting it all tied down again. Just make sure I'm on camera. And then my my cue. And so I would probably do the same as when I started. So I started with three, I would probably end with three, if you want it to look, you know, symmetrical. But again, nobody ever looks that close when you've got jewelry on. So if you only did two on one side and three on the other, again, nobody's going to ever say anything. Uh, so I don't worry about little tiny details because they're just not that important. It's important to have fun when you're doing this stuff. We don't want it stressful. Okay, so I'll do my last one here. And you can see that that does add a little bit extra length. So if you uh, have made it and you think, ooh, I might have made it too, too big, then um, just do one square knot. Don't worry about doing three. Um, there we go. And I will also show you another little trick that you can do. So now we're going to uh, just tie this off in the back. And because it is Irish wax linen, it's got that stickiness to it. So it will stick really, really well. But um, we probably could use a little dab of glue back here. So I'm just going to tie that nice and tight. And then I'll tie one more knot. So what I would do is just get that nice and tight. And you could leave these out. Uh, you know, you could trim them to like here and then fringe it. Uh, if you don't know what I mean, let, let me just trim that one side. So you could, 
you know, do something like this and then open it up and leave it kind of fringy on both sides. And that actually would look really, really cute, but I've already cut off the other side. But you, so you could fringe it or you can just trim it like I did. And then you could just put a little bit of glue uh, right on the end there. Now, um, you will find that that knot kind of sticks up just a little bit. So you can take your um, pliers and kind of burnish that down a bit. And then now it doesn't have that sticky sort of pokey out thing because that's the way Irish wax linen is. But now I don't feel that uh, bump at all. So, all right. So to finish this off, we're going to just make some barrel knots. So a couple little things that you can do here is uh, now you can take it and put it around your wrist and see where it's landing. And I can see that mine's going to probably end up right exactly where I want it because by the time I get a barrel knot and then my space for my button, I think it'll be perfect. But let's say that you just got to that point and then you realize, uh oh, it's going to be a little bit too big. When you make your barrel knot, you could actually put the knot sort of over top of these a little bit. You can push it up that way. So let's see what we can do here. So I'm just going to do a three strand or sorry, a three wrap barrel knot. Go around my tube. And we do have these tubes available for purchase if anybody's looking for them. I will put a link to this and all the other supplies that I used. So I just want to do that kind of a little knot there. So you see what I mean? I could push it up over top there if I wanted to have it a little bit on the shorter side. So there's always ways that you can play with things. And then now what I want to do is take my button, place it in between the leather, and I know that I need to make it about that big. And then I will, I'm not worrying so much about what is the top piece and what's the bottom piece, because normally I would offset my leather a little bit, but because I really didn't know what I was going to make when I started creating this, um, I can see I've gone down too far. Um, I was just kind of playing and then I realized, oh, I've got my leathers matching and it, but I only am doing just uh, one barrel or two barrel knots at the end here. So it doesn't really matter, but I will measure, like I said, to tell you what my waist is so that you're not cutting such a big piece of leather because I want, always want to start off with more so I have more to play with. All right. Get that kind of tightened up. Before I tighten it, I always like to try my button in there. There we go. You have no idea how awkward it is sometimes trying to show you things on camera while doing them. It's like normally I would just be whipping that around and shoving it in really fast, but I'm like, okay, well, I should try to do it so they can see what I'm doing. <laughs> and it looks silly. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to trim those ends off. And again, because this is going to be yours, you can make it however you want. Now, I would take a little bit of GS Hypo and put some right there and right there and then a little uh, bit right there because your button uh, clasp area is what is going to take the most punishment. So now you can see that when I pop that in there, there it goes, it fits perfectly. Look how cute that is. Again, I'm not the best hand model because of all my uh, precancerous lesions that I've got. They don't always look so pretty, but I think this is so cute. Now, if you used a button that was a little less feminine and maybe used some uh, darker colors or something a little different, I think this would also be a good unisex kind of bracelet for, so for both, um, you know, men and women, I think this would be fabulous. So now let me measure what I had left over. So I started off with 60 inches of leather and I have 12 and 16 so, so 18 inches on either side so 36 so you could probably get away with let's say we'll use 30 less so you could probably get away with about 34 inches or so maybe yeah maybe less than a meter of, of leather of two millimeter leather so there you go. I hope you like this one. Like I said, everything will be listed uh, beneath, beneath the video. Everybody always says, well, where is that? So on your, um, if you're on your phone, there's a little down arrow uh, or it'll say more. You can just go underneath the video and it'll have the listing of everything. If you're on your uh, laptop, it's a little bit easier to find. Uh, so I will uh, list all the products that I used. And this is a good stash buster if you've got eight-aught seed beads. 
Um, but I really enjoyed the way that this one uh, looks and, um, and I think it turned out really, really cute. So if you like this video, please make sure to give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please make sure that you do so. I really appreciate it when everybody leaves me lots of really um, sweet comments. So I want to thank you so much for joining me and we will see you on the next one.